Back in 2016, I'd only been in one abandoned building before I approached this Victorian asylum. I had read about how it was haunted and how scary it was, how it had been abandoned for more than 20 years, but was still very difficult to get inside of. As I got closer to the beautiful building, to my shock, a door was wide open and I walked straight inside. Enthralled by the architecture and the decay, this was the beginning of a six-year journey into the dark history of Century Manor. Century Manor was built in 1884 and is now the main building that still remains of the Hamilton Asylum for the Insane. Its original use was as a reception hospital, but shortly after its construction, Century Manor was converted from a reception hospital to a detention center for the criminally insane, housing some of the worst and most violent criminals in the province. Violence and atrocities began as soon as the doors were opened. Only months after the hospital was opened, a man was struck in the head with a gardening hoe and died from the injury. Then a staff member was killed by a patient with an ax. Violence, abuse, murders, suicides, and rapes all took place in these walls with an estimated 300 deaths in 50 years. Punishments were barbaric and mostly consisted of the Utica crib, a rectangular box made from combinations of wood slats or metal screening with a hinged lid that could be latched closed on one side. The box was large enough to allow a person to lie straight inside with the lid closed. Then there was hydrotherapy, a practice of continuous baths, mummifying a patient in wet cloth or spraying the patient with water. With a continuous bath, the patient was basically strapped into a tub with a canvas sheet covering the bath and just their head poking out. The bath could last for several hours to several days. At times, these two would be combined. A patient would be wrapped in wet towels and placed inside of the Utica crib. So much damage in these hallways. Still some old clothes racks with hangers, rusted out hangers. And then dishwashing equipment. elevator shaft. This definitely would have been a service elevator. There's the elevator itself down there. The counterweight. I 
stinks in this room. What is this thing? I don't know what this is. It almost looks like a deep freezer, but it's not. Any of you would know what this is. Please let me know. Wow. Broken glass. Just a green room. Oh, we've got lockers in here. Ooh, a lot of lockers. Scared the crap out of myself. There's a lot of papers on the ground. I'll check those out. See if there's anything on them. No, it's all just blank paper. That's the thing, when you come to these places, doesn't matter how many times you come, you always find new stuff. I have never seen this room before. This is an old desk. It's knocked over on its side. I've never seen this room in here before. You've been in here a few times, you ever seen it? So cool. You ever been in here, this room? Yeah, I have. Okay, I've been in here like 10 times before and I've never seen that. What? That whole room, there's two rooms, there's like lockers back there. Yeah, yeah. Look at the decay in here. There's paint peeling and dripping everywhere. Just the look of this and knowing what really went on behind these walls within these walls. Look at this area. kitchen sink and some shelves. More patient rooms. Just so eerie and creepy in here. In the Victorian era, medical treatments were bizarre and cruel, to say the least. Dr. Richard Buck, the first superintendent of the asylum, was known for his strange treatments, such as wiring, 
inserting a silver wire into the penis of male patients, and then countless surgeries on the reproductive organs of female patients. At the time it was believed masturbation in men led to insanity and for women it was believed that reproductive organ problems were also a cause of insanity. After only one year, Dr. Buck left the Hamilton Asylum to become the superintendent of the London Asylum. The second superintendent was forced to retire after a couple of years. Then the third superintendent of the Hamilton Asylum was also removed from his position for malpractice based on his treatment of the patients. Creepy little cement half circle rooms. This one has a burnt up chair inside of it. And here is what's left of the furnace room. And as if what these poor souls endured inside of the building wasn't bad enough, when they got outdoor leisure time, families from the surrounding area would come to mock them, setting up picnics just off the grounds, calling it the theater of the insane. In the 1920s, the use of Sentry Manor was changed again from housing the criminally insane to regular patients, which included World War I veterans, which broke a large scandal. A former attendant of the asylum wrote, the place is worse than hell and the poor creatures confined there are treated like pigs. Treatments changed from wiring and surgeries to lobotomies and shock therapy. And in the next decades, the violence continued and the hospital saw massive overcrowding. More radical treatments were discussed and experimented with, such as the dandelion experiment, where doctors experimented with drugs like LSD. This was at the same time that at the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal, a program was being run using LSD for the American CIA mind control program called MK Ultra. Another bathroom with a shower stall.
Everything good? What? People? Yeah. All patient rooms. Oh my god. It's so bad in here now. Yeah. I don't know if I'm good with either. I always loved this archway. Somebody ruined that. There was some artist going around doing these little murals in the buildings. It was pretty cool, and that people ruined it. There was one in the other room as well. Oh wow, so much graffiti in here. Yeah. Oh, it's still semi intact. So the first time I ever came in here, that wall was the fitness wall. It still said fitness wall on it and it had all these little sticky tacks all over it. The sticky tacks are still there. This place has been so messed up. Do you remember that when this was the fitness wall? No. When it said fitness wall on it? I go back to my first video and see. Yeah. Because it was there. So this would have been like a recreation room or whatever. By the 1970s, it was decided to close the asylum and build a new hospital. The main building was demolished in the 1980s and Century Manor was used for administrative purposes until the 1990s. It has sat abandoned and decaying since then. Many proposals have been brought forward to make use of the building, but the city government has denied all of them. Then in 2020, the provincial government took control of the land. 
prompting the formation of a group of citizens with the goal of saving the historic building. Less than a year later, it was announced that a 256 bed long-term care home will be built on the site with zero mention or any plans for Century Manor, leaving its future as unknown.